<laughs> okay, so now we start with a different block. I know you know we are like uh, uh, mixing both, so you get time to process. And now we start uh, with Andre that is going to tell us a bit about uh, this agenda. Yes, but I'm extremely uh, grateful for the previous lecture. Here, here. Because I, I plan to say uh, just in five minutes what are the cobordism, cobordism, but now they are explained in details. So I'm happy. I should. Uh, I should. I don't have to repeat the definition. But maybe I would just state the, uh, the computation, which is uh, taught by Stone, uh, and maybe the most important computation was by Quillen. So first of all, I'm not interested in non-oriented cobordism, but I need some structure. Either uh, oriented cobordism, I consider I consider oriented manifolds with fixed orientation, or spin manifolds, or complex man or manifolds with complex structure, or maybe with uh, a skewed structure that is uh, complex structure with uh, determinant one. So there, there are several. Uh, so I have this omega SO oriented cobordism. And uh, we have this uh, omega spin. Uh, I can put gradation downstairs. Or also omega U, which also is called just U. So these are manifolds. So Basically, you are interested in uh, complex manifolds with just usual complex manifolds, but if we want to organize it in a in a um, uh, cobordism ring, then it would not make sense to, to ask that the complex manifold is a boundary of something because it has to be uh, even dimension. There is no complex structure of the odd dimensional spaces, but that's why we use this table stable construction that you use only uh, uh, almost complex structure on the stable bundle. So it makes sense to talk about cobordism group or bordism group or bordism ring of uh, almost complex manifolds. And also maybe there is a common denominator and there are maps. This is kind of a phenomenon. This is kind of a miracle that uh, these groups, they have some torsion, in fact, only two torsion uh, that, that, that these two can have two torsion. But if you uh, tensor it, for example, with just Q, then it's uh, very easy. So maybe I should say, for example, this one just becomes isomorphism. And this is just a polynomial ring of the manifolds of dimension four. And it happens that I already, they have complex structure, these manifolds. So it's just a polynomial ring in uh, infinitely many variables, and each of these variables dimension H for K. Okay. And this is isomorphism. Even isomorphism up, uh, when you invert two. And this one is uh, again, this even better, it's a polynomial ring uh, in variables in even dimensions. But maybe the generators are quite complicated. But if you tensor with Q, then you can take uh, Q of uh, projective spaces. So I more got used to complex geometry. So for me, it's strange to write CP1, CP2, it's P1, P2. But if I forget, then this means uh, it's complex. So 
So that means that uh, you can choose the generators uh, over integers, but if you invert uh, invert some denominators, you can uh, this this form the then generating. And here you just skip the first the CP one, uh, the the first generator. And then the generator in degree four, this is the lowest dimension, then you should take something like a Kummer surface, that is source surface, the smallest algebraic variety with, with uh, trivial canonical class. And then what else? So it's a miracle that you start with some general topological setup. You consider some manifold with some abstract hom homotopy structure. And it turns out that you can choose at least up to a torsion generators, which are algebraic varieties. And not only algebraic varieties, but these this are the basic algebraic varieties, projective spaces. OK. So this is my addition to the cobordism. And my, my further plan is the following to say what is what is genus, and then I should say what are the rigid genera. Uh, and then I would define elliptic genus. Via rigidity. And then I would explain why this genus, this will be some topological condition, but then I would explain what is the connection with uh, elliptic curves. So why is it called elliptic? In other words, what's connection with the uh, elliptic curves? And then I would explain what is the uh, so elliptic genus as with an index that is the index of some uh, twisted uh, twisted uh, spinner bundle, and also where by Witten, but it, this would be probably for should be the next lecture. Uh, the elliptic genus as uh, other characteristic of chi y genus of loop space, and finally modularity property. Or Calabiao uh, manifold. So this would be for the complex elliptic genus, and the beginning would be more or less uh, the history. So it's not very old history, it's the end of 80s. So I don't know how you see the time. The end of 80s, it is long time ago, or is it just yesterday? <laughs> so it depends on the, on the perspective. So I will not say for me, but I, I, I still remember where this uh, it was very hot surface. So there are some proceedings about about eight the proceedings of Land Weber and co-authors. There is a, a lecture notes about uh, modular forms and uh, elliptic cohomology and, and elliptic genus, and there are a lot of articles. There are also survey articles which are easier to read. Uh, there is article by Witten, for example, explaining this loop, uh, this uh, loop uh, point of view. There is a by Don Zagier, uh, nice article about the modular property. And okay, so what is first? What is genus? So this is very simple. Genus is a homomorphism. of rings. So I take some cobalt ring group. Oh, ah, this is a ring. So this is a compact way to write in there, but it means that for a manifold, 
you associate invariant minus. And it has to have this property. One is that uh, it's additive with respect to the joint union. It's invariant with respect to the cobordism relation, cobordism in the class. And uh, it's multiplicative with respect to a Cartesian product. So this is just in one line written that this is homomorphism of rings. So maybe examples. Example. So, for example, if I take omega S O, and I would like to take the Euler characteristic of M. So, is it? Um, uh, so, okay, sorry. So, the, the line, the the, the, the divisor. The, the, yes. So, <laughs> if, yeah. You I should to, not approach it. You should cross it. I, I will not cross it. No, no. You you, you, you have to cross it. You have ah. to be on the right hand side. Yeah. I, I have to stay here. No, yes. no, on the other yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Oh, but it's hard to write. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the question to the public <laughs> is it Sorry. okay now? That's very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is it genus? For example, two sphere. Uh, what's the Euler characteristic? So you know it's two by Euler theorem. But the sphere is the boundary of a ball, so it's not, it's not, um, it's not a genus in that sense. But there is another one, signature. Uh, I don't know the audience is mixed, so maybe I should say just at least in words what is a signature of a manifold. So if a manifold is of dimension divisible by four, then it has a middle cohomology in the even dimension, and then you have intersection form. You can intersect cycles and it is by bi linear form, symmetric. And you can ask about signature of that form. And this is invariant of a manifold, topological invariant, not only differential. So it's defined for the uh, manifolds of dimensions divide, divisible by four and uh, easy calculus of uh, from intersection theory shows that it's uh, when the manifold is the boundary of something then the signature is zero so this is uh, uh, this is well defined on the cobordism classes and Moreover, uh, it's, of course, it's additive with respect to this joint union and it's multiplicative, some kinet formula. So it's okay. Maybe I would not continue as well, but now take u, which is omega u, and all the characteristic here. All the characteristic here is the integral over top. Uh, chain class and in the minute I will uh, show you that in such case uh, this is um, invariant with respect to, to the boarding this complex boardism so this is also um, um, a genus. And what else? And for the spin manifolds, you can take uh, what index of the Dirac at, uh, spin manifold. You have uh, Dirac operator. You can take its uh, its index. So it's integer. All of these are integers. Okay, so now uh, I, I wrote these calculations here. You know all these rings, they are polynomial rings. And uh, it's obvious, you teach it, we teach it on the first course on algebra. If you have polynomials and some homomorphism from a, from a polynomials to any ring, so it's determined on the, uh, the its values are determined on the generators. So, Let's cook up a, a generating function. So 
So we have this uh, genera of uh, projective spaces, C, T, N. So basically you take the collection of this genera, but for some strange reason, I divide it by N plus one, and then multiply here by uh, minus plus T. Yes, it would be T to the N plus one. Sounds from equals zero to infinity. So this uh, series tells you everything about genes. So let's see what is in this case. What is signature? What is the signature of the projective space of, of even dimensional? Projective, complex projective space of even dimensional. Uh, so it's only one dimension in the middle, and the, the, the form is if you the intersection form takes value one. That's if you intersect two generating, or maybe I should maybe I should say what on which this is computation is based. That I take the cohomology of CP and so this is polynomial generator of the hyperplane class H, and in the n plus one is divided by the ideal. The higher higher powers are zero. So what is the intersection form? Intersection form is in the middle. You have one generators, one generator H to n over two if n is even. And if you multiply it, if you take square of that, you get the highest degree and you choose orientation in a way that you get one. Okay, so that's why I can say that uh, here, this generate, I, I call it the function G of and for some strange reasons, I call it logarithm. Okay, so here, this is sum from n equals zero to infinity. Then there is one, n is even, so two n plus one. Let's see, two, two n plus one. So now there should be classes from calculus and uh, do you remember what do you get, what you get? Log of one minus two squared. What? Was? Log of one minus two squared. No, not log because you take only. Uh, All right. Only so something seem close. Uh, so this is just uh, arcus tangens. Arcus tangens hyperbolic. So this is the function that remembers everything about. Uh, Signature and it appears in the Hirschebrook theorem on signatures. Okay, uh, so this one, in this one, you get the very similar thing from n plus zero to infinity and n plus one t uh, y one uh, here. No, I take n plus one, all the characteristics and n plus one. So this is uh, what? One. So I, this is sum of the geometric series. T times, uh, t by one minus t equals n plus one. Right? Uh, all the characteristic is n plus one. I divide it by n plus one. Uh, I mean, there's no factor, factor of t. T. Yes. In fact, I wanted to give another example for you, which is more important. Um, uh, another genus. Uh, so, uh, 
And for the complex manifold, I can even for almost complex manifold, I can compute uh, Euler characteristic of M. In. Maybe I just define it for the complex manifold, but you can extend it. Uh, oh, and so what is this? Uh, this is Euler characteristic of the trivial sheep, but Euler characteristic in the sense of algebraic geometry. So it will take all the cohomologies, and uh, then you get what I wanted initially that. From n equal zero, so okay, and then you get one minus logarithm one minus and for the for this one, uh, finally for the spin, you get uh, that I have. Uh, Arcus Here's some piece, I think like two. So this series tell you tell you everything about the genus that you are interested in. Okay. So can you say again? Which case is the one you have on the on the, on the uh, This is for for the complex bodies. So for you uh, to oh, uh, z that takes uh, if m is complex, then I take the uh, uh, Euler characteristic of m, and there is um, generalization of that. Z of Y, then I take M and to sum the Euler characteristic of M in the, the coefficients of the forms, P forms, times a formal variable P. And this is called chi Y genus of Hirzebruch. So this is general, uh, closely related with the uh, elliptic genes that I okay. So this function tells you everything about the genus. And now suppose you have a manifold which is smooth manifold, and the question is uh, can you compute the genus uh, knowing this uh, only this function? Of course, the procedure would say. You have a manifold, find uh, its representative uh, in terms of generators of the cobordism, and then uh, you would get an answer. But there is another way, which is uh, by Hirzebruch. Hirzebruch uh, a multiplicative series. So suppose you have F, which is a formal power series, say with Q or any other ring it can be M of uh, X. Uh, and say this F uh, one plus uh, higher, higher term. So it's an invertible element. So from such a power series, you can uh, you can cook up a multiplicative series. So let's call it A F M. What is this? So you just take product of F of X A uh, from I. One to n, and this function is symmetric with respect to x. So each homogeneous part is a polynomial. So follow that there exists. Uh, maybe I would 
make a small modification. Uh, but uh, is FX fixed or uh, is it any generating function which starts off like that? Or is it? Uh, I start with a function with this one. Okay. It's a function, it's a formal power series. And I take the following product, which belongs to uh, x1. And it's symmetric. So it can be, uh, and I take, uh, okay. So it can be expressed, can be expressed as uh, some polynomial A, F, M in a symmetric, functions. Maybe I, I, I have no patience to write down the symmetric functions, but you know, the, the sum of variables, then the sum of double products, and then so on. So you have uh, such a thing, and then having a manifold M, you uh, maybe will I mm, take the same uh, letter A, F, N, and then I plug in chain classes of the tangent bundle. So if the tangent uh, bundle uh, was split into the linear bundle, then you, I would just apply this formula. And these X's then are called chain roots. So maybe they do not exist. They exist if the manifold has a, a split uh, tangent bundle, but you can do this procedure formally. And then I integrate over M. That means I neglect, I neglect all the other gradation parts, except this, which, is like, which lies in the dimension of M and integrate. So this is a Hirzebruch multiplicative sequence of, of uh, polynomials, and from that you get genus. Um, so maybe this was something with calligraphic uh, one. And finally, you get <coughs> and the theorem of Hirzebruch. Uh, the following that if G is a logarithm, the, the logarithm of I, then uh, I of M equal A F of M, where F is x divided by g inverse. G inverse, I mean, I take uh, inverse power series, not one over g, but. Is this g the same as that g? Uh, yes, so yes, exactly. Okay, so I should uh, finish that sentence where, where g is the logarithm. No, it's written here, yes, yes. A logarithm and I call it logarithm here. Uh, so for example, if you plug in this arcus uh, arcus tangent, I, I will move here. So if G is arcus tangent hyperbolic then f of f over tangents hyperbolic. I don't know, there are two conventions. One you write tan, and other tg. I don't know which one. Uh, so maybe let me check it. Check. 
I do it. No, I will not. Yeah, maybe I don't have time. But but I just give a proof. Oh, oh it's the following. Uh, first, you have to know what is the tangent. Uh, so uh, you check just check for. CPN because it's enough to check on the generators. So what is the tangent space of M in this our case? So formally this is O1 minus O. So uh, this is tautological bundle over P1, the bundle uh, that generates all the the Picard group. I don't know which words I should use because they're so uh, there's distinguished bundle over uh, over Pn, and if you take first class trend class of that one, this is a generator 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 of uh, cohomology okay so if i uh, want to compute the uh, this af this would be integral over pn that is over this manifold and i have to take x F of X and all that to the power N plus one. So this is some characteristic class and I have to integrate. Okay, and maybe I integrate it here. So we do. So what is this? So M is PN of CPN and you should look only what is in the gradation N. So oh, this is coefficients of x coefficients in the gradation of and then in the gradation uh, x to the power n because this is the highest. Okay. So you multiply it by x to n plus one, and you look what is the coefficient at x plus one. So this is the same as the residue at x equals zero of the function one at n plus one. Okay, but F was a uh, was an inverse of G. So by by change of of variables, it will be the uh, residue at T equals zero here T to power n plus one, and then here G. Okay. So this is how you change variable uh, computing residue. So you get exactly a coefficient coefficients of g prime at power n. So this is the g prime. If you multiply this, you get cancelled, and you get exactly this in time. So it's very funny computation, and you it somehow combines. Uh, uh, elementary complex analysis with uh, with this abstract homotopic notion. This is very striking that you first you do something about cohomology classes. They turn out to be a polynomials, and then you forget that these are some expressions in uh, formal rings, maybe even if integer coefficients. But you treat it as a complex functions, and you apply stupid. I mean, not stupid, but basic algebraic uh, analytic properties. And the same will happen with the elliptic chains. 
sorry, question. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when you said it's enough to check for CPN, you say you got rid of the torsion, or you can actually that I mean, your generators are CPN only when you tensor by Q? Yes, I, I wrote that uh, generators for the uh, oriented cobordism or bordisms are the even CPNs and the uh, generators for the complex bordism are all CPNs and for spin as well. So you can forget about abstract manifolds, only CPN exists. So even if you don't tensor by Q, those are the generators. Uh, so uh, no, they are not generators over, over Z. Uh, there are some Milnor manifolds that are well described. These are some vibration of uh, PNs over PNs. But don't you need the generators over D here? Or? No, this is homomorphism to Z, so torsion is Q. Ah. If you had a homomorphism to some other ring with possible torsion, then indeed you would have ah. to. Sorry. But we are, we are careless. Okay. And from our point of view, spin structure doesn't uh, matter so much because up to two torsion. Okay, so uh, uh, this is this is this a is this theorem a general fact about uh, generating functions, or is this making use of some properties of uh, the generating function of a genus? Is it something specific to genus, or is it a general fact about generating functions? Uh, I don't know how to answer. So it's a group somehow cook up this generating function in a way that it works. No, I mean, uh, does it still work? Like if you just pick an arbitrary gener generating function, like arbitrary formal series and- Okay, so yes, so the other way. I have a formal power series yeah. and I can construct genes. Well, that's it. Okay, okay. So, the, so there are no further constraints other than- No, so the constraint is that this uh, generating, this, uh, this inverse here, so there are two possibilities, either G of X begins with X or X over the inverse of X begins with one. Ah, so that's the only uh, constraint. Yes, uh, still maybe sometimes it's convenient to not have one, but something invertible. So then you get unnormalized genus. <coughs> Uh, but this is just a uh, cosmetics to turn it to that one. Okay, so maybe I should say now uh, about rigidity. Uh, I, 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 and one more question, and this is something that is true in, in every ring and not just complex numbers. Or what? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the heads of book, um, this much, this it, yeah. it can be any ring, uh, but uh, as someone noticed that uh, torsion may make a problem, so it should be a ring which is algebra over Q. Over, not over Q. It's, uh, yeah, it has no torsion as a billion group. This is the only. only. So rigidity. So first, um, suppose you have a vibration. And vibration, fiber, space, and then base of manifolds. So you have you know that Euler characteristic of E, the Euler characteristic of F times Euler characteristic of D. And the same is true with Hirzebruch uh, genus, if these are complex manifold. So the question is uh, for which, for which uh, phi a genus, I would concentrate on uh, complex topology because it's easier to read R, or maybe just take any ring, maybe Q, for which uh, genus uh, this holds.
or to solve it, uh, to solve it, uh, it's uh, convenient and also for further application, it's, um, I should not cross that line. Uh, I should uh, uh, mention the equivariant region. So everything happens in equivariant cohomology. Equivariant cohomology with respect to some group action. So some group is acting on the space. The, the projective spaces are very nice. They are homogeneous space with action of the uh, unitary group or torus has important action. And then one can introduce the cohomology, uh, equivariant cohomology, so G acts. And then if you have equivalent cohomology of M, uh, this is some group, which is, uh, of course, a module of an equivalent cohomology of a, of a point. And maybe if I assume that G is a um, torus, torus, that means, I mean, just S1, S1, or if you prefer U1. So this is just a polynomial ring. I take uh, rational coefficients. Or C of T. So this index, uh, this, uh, this group has more structure. It's module of this one. And uh, you can ask about uh, equivariant genus defined exactly by the same procedure. So it would be element of Q of T. And we say that T is rigid, pi is rigid. Pi S1 of M is constant. So there are no powers. And by some abstract, uh, by some abstract, uh, so already the um, classifying space for that group was mentioned. Uh, no, maybe I, will, I have no time to go into details, but these things are equivalent. equivalent. But if I have an action of a circle on, on, on the torus, then everything is much easier. So maybe now localization. localization. If torus or maybe just C1 and acts M and suppose uh, the fixed points. Is finite. Then there is a localization theorem. There are two pairs of authors. One is Atia Bot, other is uh, Berlin Verne. says that the uh, integral over M, uh, over M of any uh, class, uh, class belonging to cohomology, equivalent cohomology of M, can be computed as the, not integral, in this case, just the sum, sum over fixed points, Here I take alpha restricted to a point divided by the Euler class of T M at that point. So maybe let me let me uh, let me explain. Class belongs to equivalent cohomology, whatever it is. If you restrict it to a point, it belongs. Equivalent cohomology of a point, which is polynomial ring. 
So this is polynomial ring and also Euler class of the, of the space is basically, this is a character. This is a character of the space. Uh, so this, this is quotient of some polynomial divided by a monomial and it's rational function. And the miracle happens that if you sum up, you get uh, integer. So maybe I just do example. For example, I would compute the uh, Euler characteristic of CP1 with coefficients of O, uh, o uh, yeah. And if I said that the generating function was minus logarithm one minus x, so the inverse, the function f should be x divided by one minus f two. So this is inverse of the logarithm. Okay, so the Euler characteristic of, and I compute it equivalently, CP1 so the, uh, there is a torus acting on the so this is sphere so torus is acting rotating the sphere and there are two poles north and south and you should name the character so if at north you have characters t in the south you have characters minus t so first t So this is one part, and then, uh, okay, and this should be divided by T. I take this restriction and divide by T. So in fact, I get And if you uh, simplify, you get equivariant, uh, other characteristics. So let, let's do it. Let's make the common denominator. So I did this without change. And here I multiply uh, denominator and numerator by e to the minus t. So okay. So you get one. And now there's a question. Uh, Sorry, can, can you see more specifically what is alpha attributed to p? I, I understand there is a there is a map, but is it possible? Uh, so this is a cohomology theory. And whenever you have map from one space to another space, equivalent map, then you can pull back. Yeah, I understand that. But if, if I give you the form, how do you calculate it in terms of the fixed point? This coefficient is it possible to? So you have to have equivariant form. So this is and also maybe I so uh, the RAM the RAM realization. So the RAM, if you have forms, you have say omega, you have differential d omega. So this is uh, usual cohomology, uh, equivalent. Yeah. For simplicity, <coughs> take um, the group would be just one. So you, so this is a complex of forms omega. So it's very unfortunate. The forms are also called omega. So take. and you tensor to it another variable. So I add one extra variable uh, and I define the differential, twisted differential. Then contraction of omega with, uh, so if you have action of a circle, you have uh, field. So, this then this map 
So you give T a gradation to so this uh, goes mm, the gradation here goes up by one, here down by one, by you multiply by T. So in fact, it was already in Witten paper this uh, this kind of twisted uh, complex, and it computes uh, the RAM realization of the equivalent cohomology. So giving a form. It's not enough to have a form. You have to have its expansion uh, such that the, not only that T omega is zero, but also should be contraction omega with this field should be the some omega, uh, should be some eta of, of uh, gradation smaller and Again, d eta, or maybe to make it systematic, this is omega zero, and the omega zero is omega one, and the d omega one is omega, uh, and now, uh, now what? Then the contraction of omega one should be omega, d omega two. I mix something, but, but, but this, this kind of, Chain. So you have refinement, refinement of the equivalent form, but here everything is natural and uh, this, uh, if the manifold is acting, is acted by a group, then you have refinement of, of characteristic classes to equivalent theory. Okay, so maybe, uh, what, what time I should stop? I started 15 minutes. Uh, it's five by past four. Five to the minute more. Yeah. Five to the minute more. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so maybe I should formulate the theorem and then define the elliptic uh, genus by rigidity. So the uh, so easy theorem. The, the phi is rigid. Even on the east, still a specialization. Of I Y of here's a group I Y. That means that the um, X over G inverse of X is uh, uh, X one minus minus X. So how you prove it? You just write down the formula for the projective space and you get constraints. You get constraints on the coefficients that appear in this function, or G or F, whatever. And you find out that there are just one, uh, one degree of freedom. And this is this Y. But uh, uh, by rigidity, you mean this condition? Uh, I mean this equivalent rigidity. For sure, you have this. This uh, this is easy. Uh, and and uh, what's the statement of? Uh, I mean, something is equivalent to rigid. What does that mean? So I define rigid uh, that satisfies this multiplicative property that was already uh, okay that, here. Yeah, that, yeah. Here, this is rigid. So this is nice topological question. Which genus? Which genera are multiplicative with respect to perpetuation? And there is striking answer that almost there is. Not very, there, there is not very many. This is basically this is only one. Here's a group genus. It's given by this uh, formula, and you can spe specialize wider. Okay. So questions. Uh, so let's be more uh, humble. You don't want to have multiplicative property for any vibration. Uh, question. Uh, suppose, uh, no, not suppose. Consider there are only vibrations of the form form that F is a spin manifold 
manifold and the E is a spin manifold with action. The action preserving the spin structure and consider uh, just uh, F for some for some uh, G principal bundle. So I ask about the rigidity for very special vibrations, only such that uh, fiber is spin and it's not some randomly glued, but it's glued by some uh, group acting by Lie group, this uh, Lie group. Okay. So you can test it. Um, on the uh, on the uh, bundles of the where <clears throat> where psi is uh, even dimensional even dimensional vector bundle complex vector bundle. So these are special uh, special uh, examples of the uh, spin manifolds. This uh, so this uh, then the fiber is odd dimensional manifold it has spin structure, and if you test it, so this is E, and you ask that phi in that case should be zero because. Uh, Cobordism group in the uh, these dimensions are vanish. It's a dimension not visible by by four. So Oshanin checked it and uh, Oshanin checked that. Uh, so, so maybe call it this is general rigidity. Okay, so we are here. We consider only this one, and these are special. These are special. So this is called it general, and this special. Uh, so Shanin checked that if satisfied only the special case. In fact, he was checking only for the vibration over, uh, of uh, very, very special for the minor manifold. So very, very basis projective space and the total space uh, and the fiber is projective space. So Ochanin showed that this implies that G of, uh, of T is the form Two here or uh, X maybe size square plus size big size. So it has to be very of oh, here's epsilon. So there are only two uh, two degrees of of uh, freedom. In fact, one can do it by tens, just plugging into this equivariant, uh, this check by equivariant calculus that get formal power series. And first, two tens of g are arbitrary, and then everything is determined. Okay. And it's called elliptic genes. Uh, 
and you may ask why is it a elliptic genus? Why this name comes? It's an elliptic integral. Yeah, so it's elliptic integral. Mm -hmm. And also uh, you can say that if you can consider an equation uh, one, So this integral is integral of the form x divided by y. So this is some invari in invariant form. So in fact, this is a residue over this curve of the form dx dy divided by equation. Uh, some residue of okay. uh, So this curve is of degree four, so it's not exactly elliptic. Uh, it has a singularity, but if you resolve the singularity, it's an elliptic, uh, so it looks like, okay, it's an elliptic curve, so let's like this, but uh, there's some point that this, such. Yes, yeah. so this is one very uh, easy singularity, a free singularity in fact, but if you take a normalization of the curve, you get elliptic curve, and this is associated with a parameter Q, which is two pi pi tau, and tau belongs to the upper, mm, upper uh, half plane of the complex numbers. Uh, so I don't know, should I say more of the, about this theory, but maybe you know that elliptic curves are parameters. This moduli space of the elliptic curves is the uh, upper half plane divided by SL, SL, PSL to Z. Okay, so maybe I will stop now. Mm, the rest would be the Don Zagier and uh, even uh, earlier authors have shown a parametrization of this curve in terms of, of Q. And all the invariants, this invariant computed in terms of Q uh, is expressed by theta function, Jacobi theta function. And uh, somehow miraculously, it happens that it looks like a, a character of, uh, of a uh, uh, twisted Dirac operator, twisted by some infinitely dimensional vector bundle, twisted by uh, some combination of symmetric and exterior powers. Okay, and this is the Witten genus. And there's another part that uh, it can be related to a uh, Hirzebruch uh, genus on the loop space. So I, 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 maybe I will manage to finish with this. Subject and maybe modularity at the end. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I miss the picture in the course. So you, you have a general theorem with characteristic rigidity as a specialization of, uh, of this Hebrew three genes, right? So this is general theorem for any kind of fibrate way. And I'm not satisfied because. Almost, I, I got nothing. Just only one genus which I know very well. Starting before 10 minutes. But are you working with this O or with you? With you. With you. Uh, I'm sorry. This, okay, so I mix things. This is with you and this is with spin. This is with spin. And your target ring R is arbitrary. Uh, maybe I take rational. Okay, so I take rationals and then this, okay, I forgot you. So then uh, this delta and epsilon are uh, also rationals, but uh, in fact, I can take uh, just a universal. This would be universal precision ring. <clears throat> and in fact, I have to invert two, which is, which causes problems because uh, then this denominator to make difference between spin and non. So, if I talk about general, uh, if I have, want to have a universal 
elliptic genus. This is the coefficient. And uh, taking integral, it means the formal integration. That's uh, it's about power series. Yeah, so this was my proof. This was for the uh, unitary, and this is for the spin or uh, SO. Okay, but can you say what is the question for the spin case? What is the question? I, I don't understand. The so question. the same question uh, is the so question is uh, is this genus multiplicative with respect to vibration? Okay, it's three. Okay, so so no restriction on vibration. I get nothing. And this specializes to the genus being zero for this type of operation. Yes, and already for these stupid things, you get uh, rigidity. Uh, or equivalently, I can, uh, if I had a projector, I could compute uh, in front of you just the equivariant uh, genus, any equivariant genus for P3, CP3. Equivariant genus. And this already, you, you can see procedure, how it produces, produces one after another. Uh, so every genus, if you take X plus, uh, a three x three uh, a uh, five x five. Then you can take whatever, and for x seven for a seven you get condition x seven written here. No, I wrote it very well. You can compute it by yourself. You just plug into this formula for the localization, which is some somewhere here. And you get the vanishing of the sum. So the first two coefficients cancel automatically, and further, no. So. Ah, and I should say that this was Oshanin uh, proof that this is necessary condition and Taubes uh, have shown the converse for this, uh, for this uh, logarithm, you get something which is indeed uh, multiplicative for every vibration of the type. So somehow I like it that you define uh, not out of the sky by this uh, formula, but by some natural property, and this formula just pops up as a, as a corollary. So the so then the bottom line is that the, the elliptic genus is always has always the good property provided that uh, you have a vibration of that type. Yes. Okay. Yes, here you get zero because this is in the dimension two n two n plus one complex. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because the, the group is the, yes. But upstairs, no. And the upstairs can be, it's a multiplicative. Okay. Uh, 